Greetings, I am Elder Dina Wingard, and I am coming to tell you about an exciting assignment that God has given to me. We are going to have a prayer week with my ministry, Your Reasonable Service Ministries. It is going to be aired December the 6th through the 12th. And each day you're going to be blessed with a prayer and some words from God by a phenomenal, powerful prayer warrior woman of God. And I'm so excited about this assignment. I've been so blessed to have so many women in my circle that are mighty, mighty, mighty in the, in the kingdom of God. And so you are going to be blessed by this assignment as well. And the reason for this prayer week is I know for myself, I am always in need of prayer. And thinking of all the things that's going on in the world right now, especially in America, all the political mm -hmm. unrest, the protest, just so much going on that I know that we all need a hear, to hear a word from God. And as you can see from all the people here, not only are we all women, but we're all black women. And I don't think that's by coincidence or happenstance. I believe that as we are praying for everyone during this particular prayer week, God has a particular prayer in mind for the black women to address the particularized freedom struggle of black women. And I am blessed and glad that God has me in this position to do so. So without further ado, I wanna take a moment to introduce to you each one of our fantastic prayer warriors that will be praying each day during our prayer week. First, we have Dr. Linderia Cheevers, and she's going to be praying on December the 6th. And as a daughter of the King, Dr. Lynn Cheevers loves spending time in God's presence in prayer and worship. Dr. Lynn, can you share with us your prayer subject, key scripture, and give us a little snippet of what your topic is going to be about? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Elder Dina, for this opportunity to pray with and for our sisters and brothers in the Lord. Amen. Our relish in the opportunities to rest in God's presence it is in the place of prayer that I commune in fellowship with God. And that's the place of transformation. That's the place where I'm affirmed in my identity. And so my prayer focus for the week is favor with God. Mm -hmm. and, and I like to pray scripture um, because God's word says that God's word does not return to God void. It does that which it was sent to accomplish. So the prayer points for this particular subject will be taken from scripture, will be taken from Exodus chapter 33 verses 12 through 13. And it says, now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, and I'm reading from the King James Version, shew me now thy way that I may know thee, that I might find grace in thy sight and consider that this nation is thy people. Mm -hmm. And the word grace in this verse is the Hebrew word chen, and it means favor. It also means precious, well-favored, adornment, acceptance, elegance, and beauty. So the favor of God attracts blessings and honor. Mm -hmm. Scripture provides insight on how to gain favor with God and gain favor with man. So favor is very important. It's a game changer. Favor with God and man can absolutely change your life. Mm -hmm. And so it means that wherever you're found, that people take a liking to you and find ways to bless you. And so God withholds no good thing from God's children and those whom he favors. So that will be my prayer focus for the week. I'm excited about it um, and looking forward to, again, praying with and for our sisters and brothers in the Lord. Amen. Thank Amen. you so much, Dr. Chivas. Thank you so much. Amen. And on December the 7th, will be Mother Woodside. And Mother Eva Woodside is a native of New York, a member of Voices of Faith Church, a woman of prayer, praise, and purpose. Mother Woodside, tell us what your prayer scripture and your prayer subject is going to be during the prayer week and expound on a bit, a little bit, if you may. Okay, uh, 
thank you so much. It's a great opportunity also to be here with you ladies. And my um, subject is favor with man. And uh, the scripture is Acts 2 and 47, King James Version, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. And I'm so excited about that because after ex the experience of the upper room, after Jesus said, and we came into the upper room, people were in the upper room and the people received the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the effects that that had on the crowd. Uh, I'm reading about that and remembering the effects that it had on me and the redemptive power of the Lord Jesus Christ. As long as we stay in line with God and we do the things God has assigned for us, and I thank God for the sanctifying power of the Holy Ghost, as we live according to what God has designed us with uh, and live um, loving man, doing the things that God says in his word, the word of God will transform us. And in transforming us, people will see the work within us because we are the sheep of his pastor. We are his eyes, we are his hands, we are everything. So when I'm thanking and praising God, I will be praising God for that because the Lord found me worthy to the call and he gives me beyond what I need. So that favor that he gives you goes beyond what you really deserve. So when people see that and see the favor on you and they question you, um, you draw in to Christ by the life you live. And so I thank God because I'll be praying for that that people will see the God in us mm. as his people with that anointing, that miraculous power of the Holy Ghost, and they will come to Christ. So the adding of the church daily will be done as you live according to God's grace. Praise Amen. God. Amen. 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 That's awesome, Mother Woodside. I'm really excited to hear about that. Amen. All right. Very good. Well, on December the 8th, we will hear from Elder Siobhan Stewart. Elder Siobhan D. Stewart is a passionate leader driven by making a positive difference globally. Elder Siobhan, tell us what your scripture text is and your subject, and then expound upon it a little bit, please. Thank you, Elder Dina, for this opportunity. So I'm excited about, you know, being able to pray for our sisters and brothers in Christ. I was given the task to seek the Lord about pure vision and I can go along with that since I am a business owner and I know the importance of, you know, having vision when God gives you an idea. So my scripture, it comes from Habakkuk 2 and 2, but I'm going to start with verse 1 because it ties in together. And it says, I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I'm reproved. And then it says in verse two, then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. And so it's very, very important that we are in tune to hear from the Lord. We have to wait and see what he's saying. He's going to give the vision. He's going to give the strategy. And so I believe my focus is people in leadership and people who are in business and leadership is across the board, whether it's leadership in family, leadership in the church, leadership, you know, outside of the church, just leadership as a whole. We got to go into 2021 with clear vision and clear strategy from the Lord. Amen. I love that. I love that. Thank you so much. Well, on December the 9th will be my turn, and I will be speaking on spirit, body, and soul. And my scripture text is 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23, which says, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what I'm going to be talking about is the importance of our bodies and how God is concerned about our bodies and our health and healing us. And once oftentimes we don't realize like the business of life, we put ourselves last. Mm. We're busy doing this, taking care of this person, that person, and what, what often suffers is our health. But what I learned in my studying is that that's not operating in godliness. And God said, don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? And so in order to have the Holy Spirit, you need what? You need first a body. Mm -hmm. 
And you got to take care of your body so that the Holy Spirit can dwell within you. So I'm going to be talking about how God wants to purify us and cleanse us, our entire bodies, physically, mentally, spiritually, intellectually, emotionally. And I'm really excited about what God has to say regarding that. Amen. 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 All right. And so on the December the 10th, we will have none other than Reverend Jatan Daniels. Reverend Daniels is an itinerant elder in the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Reverend Jatan, would you tell us what your scripture subject is, your scripture text, and expound upon it some for us, please? Okay, I sure will. My scripture um, is the 91st Psalm. Now, the 91st Psalm is 16 uh, verses. And so I'm going to focus on verses one and two. I'm going to read a little bit. I'm going to read one and two from uh, the NLT version. I, I try to, I, I don't know why, but sometimes I look at different versions. And this one just seemed to pop out at me. And it says, those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust him. Amen. 2020 has been anything but 2020 vision, most people will say. <laughs> yes. To be honest with you, I don't think there's any of us who can say that we did not experience something we have never experienced in our lives mm -hmm. this year. With that said, what God put in my spirit was better days are coming. Mm -hmm. And that even though it looked like 2020 took away our vision, it did exactly the opposite. It gave us our vision. I was born with 2020 vision. I was probably, I don't want to say how old I was, maybe born or something like that. When I started holding things back so far, my husband's like, uh, pretty soon your arm is not going to be <laughs> long enough for you to read that. And so I have, I have to, to do reading glasses. With that said and done, I wanted to focus on the first two verses, because in these verses, the four names of God are so out there and so, I mean, just right there, he just jumps, the author jumps right in to the, to the most high God, the, the, the shadow, the almighty, and it just brings out so many different ideas, and as, as far as the Hebrew words of God and the Greek words of God. So I'm just really excited about the opportunity to pray for us as we move forward. We, we, we started off in 2020 and we know what that consists of, but we're looking forward to the God who while protected us through this, this uh, uh, pandemic is also the God that's going to show us that better days are coming. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I can't wait to hear that prayer. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. On December the 11th, we will hear from Minister Deborah Asbury. Deborah is a minister, speaker, broadcaster, executive producer, talk show host, and businesswoman. Deborah, please tell us what your scripture text is going to be, your subject, and expound upon it, please. Thank you, Elder Dina. Thank you so much for this opportunity. So my topic is going to be priorities. And the scripture text comes from Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen. And all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. So first of all, priorities. The simple rule for priorities as Christians is the fact that we must keep God first. We must put him first in everything. And so what my objective is going to be as I pray about priorities, see priorities is the things that we have to do in order to fulfill what our individual purpose and calling is. God has an individual purpose and call for each of our lives. And so in order for us, in order for us to reach that objective, there's priorities that we have to focus on in order to get to that place. Amen. I also think that it has to be intentional. So just as prayer has to be intentional, 
we have to take priorities and focus, you know, what's the thing that's really important for each of us to focus on. We have family, where it's financing, budgeting. Um, depending on which phase in life you're in, there's different priorities for every phase. Mm -hmm. and so I'm just asking God to help me to prioritize as I pray about the subject of priorities to minister to the ladies that will um, tune in mm -hmm. and hopefully well, not hopefully, I just believe that he is going to touch that in each of us that's going to help us to see what our priorities is here at the end of 2020 so that we can walk into 2021 knowing those priorities and being about the business of God, seeking him first in all that we do. So Thank that's you. what I plan to pray about. Thank you so much. I can't wait Thank to hear. You. Thank you so much. And last but certainly not least, we have Elder Bernadette Dennis. Bernadette Dennis is the founder of Ignite Revivals Ministries. She's a prayer warrior and lover of Jesus Christ. Elder Dennis, will you please tell us what your scripture text is, your subject, and elaborate on it for us, please. I sure will. I thank you for having me on as well as being in the midst of such powerful women of God. Oh. My scripture text is going to come from um, Psalms 133 verse 1 and also Colossians 3 um, verse 13 and my subject is family mm. and I feel the family has been attacked uh, in this time, so we need to lift the family up. The, sh the, fam the, uh, the family needs to be strengthened during this time. We need, they need to come back into unity. And um, so with that, unity and forgiveness were my key uh, things that I want to um, pray about during that time. And the first verse, Psalms 133 verse 1 it says behold how good and how pleasant is it for brethren to to dwell together in unity mm -hmm. so unity is very important we have to come together there's too many yes we're separated because of uh covid but we don't have to be separated because uh we can't there are things that we can do to pull together help one another it's too much separation in the family families are falling apart because you know they have to spend too much time together when we should really be taking this time to love on one another and really show how you know how strong we are in our family unit yes so um colossians 3 1 uh verse 13 it says um and it's, it's the second half of this. It says, "Bearing with one another and for, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If everyone has, if anyone has a complaint against one another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must must do. So we have to forgive. We cannot be holding grudges all the time. These are things that that really." Um, put a, a, a division in the family. So those are the things that I want to pray for on that day. Um, I really, like I said, I really believe that the, the family unit has been attacked. Um, the pressures of life, working from home. I don't know if any of you are um, <laughs> working from home right now, but it's hard to work with children in the home. You know, you just kind of feel like it, it's all closing in on you. And so, you know, you begin to lash out and those things start to happen. So I really, really believe that um, praying uh, for the family and to strengthen that family unit is good. And peace. Amen. Unity, healing, and protection are Amen. also words that came up to me for a prayer. Awesome. Amen. Amen. Well, as everyone can see, this is going to be a mighty, mighty move of God, and I'm excited about it. I'm excited about just studying the subject that I'm focusing on and hearing all the ladies pray on it. And I don't know about you all, but prayer just rejuvenates me. <laughs> In the midst of turmoil, 
I know I can just go to my father and hear yeah. a word from him and he listened to me and we can just, I could just be revived. So that's our goal to hopefully revive, refresh, encourage and uplift the body of Christ, calling uh, the women back, the men back, just calling everyone who once had a relationship with God to come back, return back to your first love. And, and I know that God is going to do that. I know that God is going to have a mighty move and he has a word for somebody out there. Amen. Any mm -hmm. further final thoughts, ladies? Amen. Well, we will be broadcasting the prayers again, December the 6th through the 12th. It's going to be at 8 a.m. on uh, many of these social media sites, Facebook, perhaps YouTube, Twitter, what else? Instagram. I don't really use much, but all that. All right. God bless. Please tune in. Thank you.